We are live, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, good, evening, uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, thanks for tuning in to our first official Jeffco Health Matters <laughs> segment um, where we, we discuss the matters of health that matter to your health. Um, my name is Brianne. I'm the communication specialist with the Jefferson County Health Department. Um, I'm sort of excited to kind of rebrand our Facebook Live segments. If you've tuned in in the past, you've seen that we've been doing a Facebook Live, typically covering COVID. Um, so we're kind of excited to try out something different. The past 15 months or so have brought public health into the spotlight, so to speak, um, which is not somewhere we're usually <laughs> used to being. Um, but a lot of folks maybe don't know all of the things that public health um, has an impact on or can provide for the services that provide for the community. Um, so we're kind of hoping that this segment will shine a little light on public health, uh, what we provide and how it impacts the overall health of our communities. So to kick it off in our first official episode of Jeffco Health Matters, we are going to talk mental health because May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, and this evening, I am joined by Brittany Kastnar, excuse me, um, from Provident Counseling. She's an amazing counselor. Um, Brittany, you want to give us a little bio and about what you, who you are and what you do? Absolutely. Yeah. So thanks for having me, Brian. I love it. I love the whole idea of this, uh, this segment. I'm a clinical therapist with Provident Behavioral Health, and I provide therapy to Jefferson County residents specifically um, at no cost. So thanks to a really awesome grant by the Jefferson Foundation, we are able to provide services totally free to Jefferson County residents. Uh, so I work with clients who, of all ages who have a variety of, of different things they come to therapy with, uh, whether that's anxiety, depression, difficult life transitions, um, even you know career changes and things like that. So a, a wide variety of, of mental health issues or life issues. Um, and uh, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, and for a while we were across the hall buddies. So <laughs> did unofficial <laughs> coworker counseling. Just for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was kind of fun, good time. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I guess one of the things that we just kind of wanted to talk about, and you and I had kind of spoke earlier about what we think was important, especially with mental health awareness, is just really starting that conversation around mental health and normalizing, normalizing the conversations. Um, so I guess what, what are some of the main, what are some of the main things that you think people in the county or people just in general, especially after dealing with this pandemic and all the changes that come from that, what are some of the main takeaways or things that we want people to know about taking care of your mental health and understanding your mental health? Absolutely. So, Brianna, I think that, like you said, with normalizing mental health, specifically in in our county, you know, we have a every county has its own culture, um, and in our Jefferson County culture, we tend to have a viewpoint of mental health concerns that is more so leaning toward we can take care of it ourselves. Right. And I think one of the, the biggest things that could improve, we could improve upon in the county is taking that, I care about my neighbor and I care about my family and I would do anything and everything to help them and applying that to ourselves. Yeah. And by normalizing even the conversation of mental health and what that means and what it looks like, what taking care of ourselves mean, um, we can begin to see some improvements in, in our community as a whole. For sure. Yeah, I definitely like what you were mentioning there about like our county culture. Um, definitely we are, we're a, we're a small county, but we're a large county, which is kind of peculiar. Um, but we very much have that small county or even like our individual cities and towns have that very small community, tight knit um, culture. And that's really great because we tend to know people, we tend to get involved. Um, and we should be, I think it's great that you mentioned that, that we should be building off of that. We should be able to normalize these conversations, have these conversations within um, the schools with our youth or our faith-based programs or with our neighbors. Um, we were talking about right before all of the things that we do um, as neighbors or friends of coworkers that are considered, that would be acts of kind of self-care or even like, you know, caring for, um, we, you know, when someone is sick, we will stop by and drop off some meals, or if someone's experienced a loss, we'll check in on them. 
Um, if someone's just had surgery or they've had a baby, we'll help with childcare, pet care, you know, Absolutely. Things like that. So those are all even that we work together to help. This is just another leg of it. Right, right. You know, we do so much in to help uh, family, friends, um, strangers even, and all with the intent of helping them feel better in one way or another, comforting them, cheering them up, encouraging them. And those are all, um, those are all acts of, of self-love. Those are all acts of caring for another person. And that's really kind of what um, is the baseline of a, improving our mental health is all about, is taking care of each other and taking care of ourselves. Right. For sure. Um, so I guess one of the things too, that we had talked about is maybe something that people struggle with, not only within our County, but just in general, is that initial step of either recognizing it within yourself or, or, and then being able to ask for help. Um, what kind of advice do you have for that? Or what kind of steps or tips do you have for folks who may be in that boat right now? I think a lot of times when we're talking about recognizing our own needs, um, we, we overlook them because we, especially, especially adults, we can take on that. I can do it. I can take care of myself. I can suck it up. Right. Um, <laughs> or my problems aren't as big as my neighbors and we can minimize the things that we deal with. Um, so, or even, even not recognize them. It's very, very common for me to say, have you, you know, how's anxiety been for you? What's that been like, your experiences with anxiety? And for someone right. then to say, I don't have anxiety. And in the same beat say, I worry all the time. You know, so our, our language that we use, I think plays a big role in whether or not people are able to recognize what they're, what they're dealing with. Right. Um, you know, not attributing constant worry or extreme levels of stress and tension to something that is a mental health concern and can be improved on, can be helped. Yes, I think that's really important to share too. Um, and I'm really glad that you said that because especially, I know I keep coming back to like after this year, but this year has just, this, these past like 12 to 15 months have been a time for a lot um, of growth and reflection and all sorts of things, but definitely being able to recognize that some of the struggles that we have are, are something that we can, we can seek help for. Like you said, you know, I worry a lot, or I've got a lot of, that's something that we can seek resources for. There are people in the community. There are people in your support systems, your family members, your friends, um, your church buddies, um, the counselors, we have numerous counselors in the county. Um, there's a lot of um, counseling opportunities as far as like the crisis lines or just like the chat forums and things like that, where we can we can recognize that, normalize the fact that this is something that we can address and then work to improve upon, which I think is really key because Sometimes we don't realize it. Sometimes with this year, it's like, oh, I'm used to worrying because every day there's something new that happens. Um, so being able to take a step back and recognizing that and then also recognizing it in our friends and family and coworkers, especially like as we get back into the offices and things like that. Um, that's one thing that I try to be like, that I try to take into account and recognize is checking in with my friends, checking in with my coworkers and seeing like, how are we doing? How are we really doing? You know, not just the casual, oh, I'm great. How are you? You know, like drive through talk or something. Right. Not the lie that we tell strangers. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. These people, you know, those people do want to hear. They do want to be a support for you just as you would want to be a support for them. Um, and we kind of talked about, I know we kind of, I'm going off a little bit, but we talked a little bit about self-care too. And I liked one of the things that you had said earlier when we were chatting um, about self-care, typically as a millennial female, <laughs> self-care <laughs> has been marketed to me as mm -hmm. face masks and bath bombs, bombs <laughs> and spa days and yep. hair masks and different things like that. But that's, I mean, that is, that can be a form of self-care. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. For what, a lot what of, are people, some of those other ways? Unrealistic. Right. 
you know, for a lot of people, um, you know, we hear, oh, self-care, take the day off. You deserve it. Right. <laughs> we all deserve a day off, but right. that's not realistic for a lot of families. Exactly. And, and so sometimes it can seem like self-care is unreachable. Um, but we, honestly, we all do acts of self-care every day. We just don't label them as such. You know, mm-hmm. we go have a drink with friends after work. We put our favorite movie on because it makes us laugh. Um, we go to a baseball game, um, on Friday night because it's fun and we enjoy it. Those are all acts of self-care. Those are us taking care of ourselves, nurturing what makes us happy, um, reducing us in our life, even if it's to just a small degree, you know, those, those are also acts of self-care. Self-care doesn't have to be a bath bomb or a face mask, right? 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 <laughs> it can be spending intentional playtime with your kids because that's fun. And you've not actually sat down and played a game together all week long. Um, right. It can be even things that just have to be done, like the dishes or the laundry <laughs> or taking our medication. Yeah. You know, those things that are, seem like chores, but really those are, those are things that we have to do that when they do get done, make us yes. feel better. For sure. Yeah, I definitely um, doing the dishes. That's going to be how I rebrand it in my head. <laughs> this is an <laughs> self care, Brian. Go do the dishes. I'm sure it my feels husband cheesy. Would be very excited about that because he does the dishes most of the time. So if he's watching, he's going to hold me to this. But and it can feel cheesy to call things like that self care. Like I know, and mm-hmm. and and especially with the kind of the, and we're really inundated lately with mental right. health. This. And- health that and it can yes. feel really kind of cliche and cringy to be like and hard to achieve gonna, right absolutely yeah. like, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do self-care this weekend right you don't have to you don't have to use that same language just making sure you're checking in with yourself how stressed am I what's going on in my life what can I do to help myself feel better right now right for sure definitely um one of the other things that I kind of wanted to chat about sorry I'm looking at my notes here um one of the things that we also chatted about was recognizing, normalizing those conversations about mental health and self-care and the importance that that has, um, not only for yourself, but also it's it's modeling for others in our life. So it's kind of like that snowball effect, um, the, you know, the habits that you pick up and the conversations that you have with yourself or with others, the language that you use over time, others pick that up. So your friends, your family are going to pick up these um these beneficial habits as well. And ultimately your children or the children that are in your life, which is a super important topic. I know just in the past, I mean, it's always been an important topic that we've kind of heard about, but especially just in the past year with obviously all the changes um, as adults, we can consume information and we can make decisions and we can listen to podcasts and the news 24 um, seven. Our youth don't always have that opportunity and they're still figuring things out and trying to, you know, figure out the world in general. And now the world's gone crazy. Um, And so mental health has been a huge piece of development here within the last year. Um, We kind of talked about how do we support our kids' mental health? Right. You know, I think that just the way, with the way that we treat our own mental health, that's such a huge indicator of how our, our kids are so if we don't have kids, the children in our life, how they're going to um, treat their own mental health. You know, there's, they're watching us. They're looking to the adults in their lives. Sure. To see, is mental health important? Is this something that I should worry about? Is this something I should um, outsource to a professional to get right. help with? Is this something I can handle on my own? And that that's a huge spectrum of things that I can handle on my own and things that, you know, This is really hard and I don't have to handle it on my own. I can ask for help. And by showing uh, the youth that we we are able to do that, look, if I have a problem and it feels too big for me, I can ask for help. Right. That gives them something to go off as well. Teaches them that their own mental health is important and that it's okay to ask for help. Yeah, I was just going to say too, I think that's great because not only does that model that it's it's good to pay attention to your mental health, that it's okay to outsource it, um, but it's also okay to bring it up. Sometimes, I mean, we were just talking about as, you know, adults or sometimes if we get in certain communities or even around certain people, we may be super comfortable. Um, I have a great group of friends and family that I 
I can blab all of my issues to <laughs> know that they are going to support me. They're going to listen. Right. Um, and then there are other places where you're like, Ooh, I don't really know if I feel comfortable with this. So this is, that is a, such an important piece with identifying our own and having those conversations because that models to our kiddos or the kiddos in our life, one, to take care of your mental health, but two, that you're a comfortable and a safe person that they can come to when they are experiencing some of their own issues. Uh, For a child of any age to have a trusted adult in their life, it makes a huge impact on their mental health. Right. It it helps reduce the risk of depression, anxiety, suicidal ideation. We need to have more opportunities in kids' lives to give them a trusted adult, a safe person. And if we don't naturally have that in our life, we have all been around those folks who were like, I'm not going to bring that up because I'm going to feel uncomfortable or um, it's not going to be received well. Um, so if we don't naturally have those people in our life, then we can uh, look for ways in our community to set those up for those kids. So they have at least one, one uh, glimpse throughout their day of someone who's safe, you know, in school, a neighbor, in, in church, whatever it may be. Right. And I mean, kids will find someone that has an impact or has an influence on them in some way or capacity. And it's not always necessarily the people that we think it is. I mean, I remember like I had a seventh grade teacher who was like, I, I wanted to be him <laughs> because he had such a calm way of handling things. And I realized that it wasn't necessarily his career that I wanted, although I did go on to teach for a while. Um, it was it was the way that he handled things. It was his demeanor and his kindness and his compassion um, that really stuck with me. So it's, you know, it's important to remember that these things have an impact. And even if we can't, um, even if we feel like we can't play a huge part in a kiddo's life or impact their mental health, because we're not a counselor or we don't have experience with it, just that in itself and how we treat ourselves and how we have those conversations and talk about mental health near kiddos or with kiddos makes a huge impact on on ultimately how they deal with their own mental health as they grow up um and you know when it comes to talking to kids about mental health kids teenagers even adults you know i think one of the the biggest things there is to not only normalize that it's okay to talk about it um but talking about it in a clear and direct way not beating around the bush of how have you been feeling? Right. Um, you know, those kind of vague questions because when we are trying to determine is someone struggling? Is, is this kid experiencing depression? Are they thinking of taking their life? Um, we, have to be, we have to be comfortable enough on, on our own to be open and honest and clear with our language. Um, in order to help them feel like, okay, yeah, I think about killing myself. So now I can say that because my trusted adult, my person, my safe spot just said it too. Um, so using that clear, direct language to ask and to keep those conversations open. Um, hey, how you doing? How you feeling is great. But when we are in that situation where we need to learn a little bit more information and, and figure out if, if someone needs more help than we can give, um, it's very, very important to be clear and direct with what we're saying. Right. Yeah. I, I think when we had this conversation outside prepping for uh, today's segment, that really struck me because I was like, oh, I, I taught for five years and I've done, you know, respite and things like that for friends. And I, that's great advice that I, I never would have thought of before, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Just being clear and concise instead of, because we think we're doing people a favor sometimes by kind of just like you said, beating around the bush and not bringing it up because we don't want to, you know, offend or bring something up that we maybe shouldn't be talking about with someone, but better to be just direct and ask and support someone. Um, so I really like that, that piece about um, the clear language. Um, so what kind of, what kind of resources, I guess, can we guide folks to? So let's say um, someone's either struggling with their own mental health or they, they're listening to this and they're like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, maybe I do need to look into outsourcing, you know, some of, some of this and helping, you know, bring in some experts in some ways. 
what's kind of the first step or what do you, what do you recommend people do when they realize, okay, maybe I could, maybe I could use someone else. You know, I think that ideally, you know, the, the first step would be finding someone in your community that you can talk to. And so that's a therapist, or maybe that is uh, someone within your church, or is that a friend, uh, finding someone you're comfortable with and having that conversation. Sometimes that can be the hardest step. And oftentimes when people come into therapy, um, you know, it's not just been a, yeah, I've, I realized yesterday that I needed this. It's, I've been needing to do this for a really long time and it's taken me a long time to get up the courage to ask for help. And so that, that first step can sometimes be really, really daunting. And so if we can find someone that in our community that we do trust, that we are comfortable with to broach that topic, um, that makes asking for help from maybe a professional or a doctor, um, even just a tiny bit easier. We've already had the conversation. We've already spoken the words out loud, right? Um, there's a lot of really great resources online when it comes to determining if, you, you know, are you dealing with um, depression or are you having um, a very healthy, normal, sad reaction to something that will pass in a couple of days? Um, you know, are you dealing with high levels of anxiety or are you uh, dealing with a very typical, normal, healthy amount of worry over something stressful? Um, there's a lot of great resources out there. I know that we had talked about some before, um, and you mentioned, you know, being able to like link or post some of those, those websites, mm -hmm. everyone can go to them, but the internet's a plethora of information. So yeah, there's definitely one I know there, um, that we have on our website on Jeffco health. It's the, um, mental health screening tool. Mm -hmm. Um, I cannot remember the name. I should have remembered this, the name of the organization, but it's a really great tool. And we've got that linked in one of our posts um, to just kind of be able to go through and answer some of those screener questions, like you said, to figure out what, where you're, yeah. if, you know. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I think for, for the most part, we, as human beings, we, we do know ourselves. It might be hard to, it might be hard to say out loud, it might be hard to say to even our friends and family, but we do know ourselves. And we can kind of follow that gut instinct and say, what I'm dealing with is actually not typical. This isn't something everyone else is dealing with. Um, and it would benefit me to take that next step. Um, you know, for the most part in our county, we've got, we do, like you said, we have a lot of counselors. We have a lot of opportunities in our county um, when it comes to low cost or, um, sliding fee options or those who are underinsured, um, our, our options start to go away. We have fewer options, um, but they are there. And I think that's an, an important tool, knowing what's available, knowing the resources that are out there, you know, hitting up websites like the, the health department's website, mm -hmm. um, and looking for the resources that are available to us. That's going to be an, another great step. Um, advocating for ourselves is just as important as asking someone else for help. Right. Absolutely. And I think something that just came to my mind when you were um, mentioning that and talking about it um, is I can remember when I was a teacher telling my students that if you have a question, ask me, don't be afraid to ask me a question because if you have the question, my light just went out, sorry. <laughs> I have the question, chances are someone else has the question and they just don't wanna ask it either. So I feel like that might come back to this where if you're struggling with something or if you're feeling a certain way, chances are you're not the only one. And even if someone may not have the exact same feelings or dealing with the same situation, they might be able to recognize, oh, okay, my friend is really struggling with this and they felt comfortable enough to open up to me about it. Mm -hmm probably touch base with them and check in with them in the same way, because I'm also feeling this, but I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to be the first person or I didn't want to bring anything up. And so that just kind of came to my mind too, as far as, you know, when you said finding a support system um, in the community. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We have a lot of, um, there's a lot of resources uh, as far as like for finding counselors. I know you can find stuff on the Jeffco health department website. Mm -hmm. um, I know, there's, um, I'm trying to think of the other, uh, like Comtree might have a list of things. There's also the Jefferson County Resource 
um, network that they've got that information on there. And we are actually working on getting a more comprehensive resource network uh, makes it easier for organizations and residents to get connected to services. It's not out yet, but when it is, it'll be helpful in this situation. Um, we're kind of coming up in our time here. It doesn't look like we've had any uh, questions or chats that have come through for today. So I guess what, um, if people were interested in connecting with you specifically, Brittany, um, if they were like, this woman is awesome. I really want to, I want to talk to her. Um, I am. I wish I totally recommend, by the way. <laughs> awesome. um, how do they get in touch with you? What's the best way to get connected to mm -hmm. So the, the best way is to reach out to our mainline Provident phone number. Okay. Um, that is 314-533-8200. Or you can go to providentstl.org. Um, that's our website. You can find some information there as well. Um, and they can get you scheduled with me. So, yeah. Yeah. And so I guess just to, so are you doing in-person and virtual, just virtual, just in-person? Where are you at with that? Right now we're 100% virtual, so we're using good old Zoom for our sessions. Um, the the tentative plan right now is to be kind of working our way back into the office um, in June. So slowly kind of building up. It won't be a 100% back to uh, in-person sessions yet. Um, right. It'll be kind of a slower process, but we are working toward that. So knock on wood, <laughs> things, <Right. laughs> things uh, start to kind of stay the, the path that they're on and um, we'll get back in, back in the office. For sure. Awesome. Um, well, so that's pretty much, like I said, we're hitting our time for this segment. Um, so thank you for joining me, Brittany, and talking about this very critical topic um, when it comes to health, Jeffco Health, but public health and um, mental health is super important. We hope to maybe come back on and do another segment, maybe a bit more in depth. Um, so I'll also be posting um, some of the resources that we talked about, but also some of the resources that Brittany has compiled. I'll put those in the comment section that way. Um, and again, they'll be on our website, but that way folks can kind of peruse them at their leisure. Um, our next episode of Jeffco Health Matters will be June 2nd. So we do these on every other Wednesday at five um, live. And then you can always hit us up on Instagram or YouTube to catch the replay if you missed it. Um, June 2nd, we're actually going to be talking to our family nurse practitioner who runs our family planning clinic. She is going to be talking to us about birth control and the right time initiative. So I'm pretty excited about that topic because we get a lot of questions about that one as well. Um, so if you have any suggestions for topics, um, health topics that you want to talk about or different programs or things that the health department does that maybe you're not for not super familiar with um, or questions that you have, we would love to hear from you. So just drop that information either in the comments or you can email us at communications at jeffcohealth.org. And um, we will see if we can turn it into a segment. So thanks for joining us and have a good evening.